I bet that you also occasionally or even more frequently find yourself so absorbed in a notification or a message that you miss out on a moment with a dear one. Today we dive into a growing phenomenon known as technoference, short word for technical interference, which refers to the interruptions in interpersonal communication caused by attention paid to personal technological devices. In a study from 2018, Brendan McDaniel and Jenny Radeski from Illinois State University share their research about 170 families with children aged five years and younger. They found that parents who had a harder time managing their own phone use were more likely to also have technoference occurring in their relationship with their child. In their study, this lack of attention during these moments where parents were distracted by their electronic devices was also linked to the children's worst behavior. This means they were seeing more problem behaviors in the child, so the child was more likely to be acting out, hyperactive, crying, showing clear signs of distress and dysregulation. Interestingly, this kind of behavior can also be observed in other situations, but what they all have in common is a distracted or not present parent or adult during situations where parents or the adults could have connected with the child. Let's focus on our youngest ones. How does our use of devices influence their behavior and language development? Now, recent studies, including one from Yama Pediatrics 2024, examined how screen use by parents affected parent-child talk. In their study, they observed families with children aged 12 to 36 months. They found that each time a parent turned their attention to a device, the number of verbal interactions between parent and child dropped. Now, what does this mean? Well, fewer conversations at this crucial developmental stage can limit a child's vocabulary growth as children learn language through responsive back and forth communication. Now, to put this in context, let's consider a simple everyday example. Imagine you're reading to your toddler. Your phone pings with a message. You glance down for a quick second, but that quick second breaks the rhythm of reading and storytelling. And then this quick second leads to a, let me just check this, or oh, I have to reply to. Instead of following the story, the children might now be focused on when you'll turn back to them, or worse, they lose interest altogether. The small interruption can shift their attention, impacting the learning moment. Another important study by Corkin et al., published in uh, Infant Behavior and Development, shows that consistent technoference can also lead to fewer interactions where children or are encouraged to use language actively. Now, it's very clear when parents are less responsive, children might hear fewer words and miss out on the chance to learn new ones. And for infants, every interaction, even short exchanges, counts towards their understanding of language structure and vocabulary, especially when all the input they get in the target language comes from us because we live abroad and there's no big community of speakers to provide more varied exposure, it's a missed chance. In my interview with speech and language therapist Veronika Osbolat, we mentioned this. I invite you to watch the video and I leave the link in the comment. Now, in situations like this, when parents are distracted, children also receive less encouragement to express themselves, which translates to fewer new words learned and reduced motivation to engage verbally. And it's not just vocabulary. The warmth and responsiveness that children associate with their parents' voice can be interrupted, potentially impacting their sense of security. This is, of course, for babies and toddlers. Now, what about the impact of technoference on primary school age children's behavior and emotional well-being? A study in psychology research and behavior managed by Shao et Ali 2024 explored how technoference affects family dynamics and primary school students' relationship with screens. Now, they found that when children observe parents giving more attention to screens than to them, it can create feelings of frustration, which might even lead to problematic behavior around screens themselves. Now, children may start associating devices with attention or affection or conversely as something they need to compete with. Imagine your child starts to rely on a tablet because they notice that screens are taking up their parents' attention. According to Shao et Ali, this can actually set up a cycle. Children may develop an emotional attachment to screens, 
or even problematic screen behaviors because they see these devices as companions that don't ignore them, unlike distracted caregivers. When focusing on adolescents, Shao et Ali have found that, I quote, those who perceive higher levels of parental technoference tend to experience heightened conflicts in their relationship with their parents and lower quality parent-child communication. Now, according to the compensation advantage theory, unmet psychological needs offline can be compensated through online networks. I invite you to read the whole study. I leave the link in the comments. So what can we do? None of us are perfect and screens are part of our life. I think we don't have to quote research to understand that children benefit significantly from consistent device-free routines. But here are some practical and not too difficult ways to minimize technoference, keep our relationships strong and support our children's language and emotional development. Consciously set up specific tech-free times or tech-free zones like during meals or bedtime, where screens are put away entirely. And more importantly, where we create full attention time, where we actively listen to our children and observe them. This gives us and our children a guaranteed time to connect without any distractions. If we start this when our children are still young and don't slip into the habit of quickly checking something online and delay information and updates, we can only profit. So for us parents and adults, this putting away the devices means instead of quickly looking for answers online, we can use our memory. Instead of checking for answers online, let's see what we have stored in our own memory first. It's an important exercise that helps actually keep our brain healthy. If you must take a call or respond to a message, acknowledge it to your child first or the other person that is with you. For instance, say something like, uh, I need to check this quickly, but I'll be right back with you. This helps them feel seen and assure them that you'll be back in a moment with them. And be back, not in 30 minutes. Keep it short, but really make sure to set your priorities in a healthy way. I personally don't take calls during meals or when talking with someone. When engaging with your young child, especially during story time, play or during meals, focus fully on them. Same actually with older children, forget the rest. Leave the world wide web in your device and switch it to silent mode or switch it off. Each interaction, each story or game is a building block for our children and actually also our own language development. And it's a building block for the emotional security of our youngest children and it's a very important moment to stay connected with our children in all ages and anyone we care about for that matter. So to sum it up, studies like the ones I just mentioned show that children's vocabulary, behavior and attachment all benefit when we have an engaged caregiver. And with this, I mean not only to give full attention, but also engage in turn takings from very early on when our children are still babies. But again, not only our babies or toddlers benefit from our undivided attention. Our teenagers and adult children deserve this too. Not to mention that we want also our children to know how to communicate effectively with their siblings, right? So, technoference may be a modern challenge, but by making small adjustments, we can preserve those precious screen-free moments with our dear ones. Please let me know your thoughts and your experience in the comments here below and make sure to subscribe so I can make more videos for this channel. So thank you for watching. Now switch off your device and let's go prioritize what matters more.